we smoked that place out until you couldn't see. Twenty twenty one was the year of YouTubers buying buildings, mostly because things have gotten out of control. I think we all have too many cars, but there's no such thing as too many cars. You just buy a bigger garage, and as all car guys know, you can never have enough garage. The you get a big garage, two weeks later you're like, I messed up. This was way too small. But I'm not gonna have that problem for a while. I think I've got the two week. Uh, we're way past the two week mark, and we're still doing pretty well. I bought 20,000 square foot of building in Kansas and it was cheap. I was up in Chicago shooting some videos with legit street cars. We were having a good time rebuilding a bagged Fiero. And at night, a listing popped up on Facebook and it showed these two buildings, just one little, you know, Facebook ad. And I clicked on it and I was like, wow, this is huge. This is gonna sell for a ton of money. It was these two buildings and they had been a welding shop. They'd built trailers inside of them. They were beat up. I just thought that that's easily worth a million dollars. But it was an auction. It was no reserve. So I hopped in, I registered for it, and the auction was opening that night. So I bid $1. And I was like, I mean, if we win it for $1, I'm definitely in. So anyway, it was about a 45 day auction and I had almost forgotten about it. And then towards the end, I checked in and I was like, well, it's a $75,000 and we're at 10 days left or something like that. And it, it didn't move again. And then it's the day of, the day of the auction ending. And it ends like a little early in the morning for me, but I woke up for this, don't worry. And uh, I started following the auction and it's at about $115,000, I think. And there's quite a few people bidding, it's running up. It gets to, I think, 175 going back and forth. And I, I might've thrown in like one or two bids. But my strategy on all auctions is be the last person. Like there's no point in bidding in the middle. The whole auction is worthless except for that last 30 seconds. Like that's all that matters. So bite your tongue. Don't put a bunch of money in and click the mouse. Otherwise you're just running the price up on yourself. Even in real life and on the internet, don't run the bid up on yourself. So I sat there, I waited it out and at the end hits. And of course this is one of those auctions that auto increments every time there's a bid, just like an auction in real life. You bid and one more minute gets added to the auction. So I waited till the very last 30 seconds and I finally threw in my bid and I think it was about $175,000. And we kept bidding it up and it just kept moving just a little chunk at a time. And I would bid it up $1,000, which was the lowest increment you could do. And then there was eventually just me and one other guy. And that other guy, you could see that, you know, the, the usernames just have the asterisks, but it makes sense because it shows you enough the username to know who you're bidding against. He would sometimes run it up like $2,500 or $5,000 and I would change the bid back to 1,000 and I would bid again. I'd wait till the timer ran out and at two seconds I'd bid again. And I did that over and over and we kept that up for about an hour going like 1,000 at a time. So about $60,000. We ended up in the, uh, somewhere in the low 200s, something like that, going, you know, just back and forth, messing around. And all of a sudden it said congratulations. And I was not expecting to ever say, congratulations, you won on this ridiculous property. But there it was, it was right in front of my face. So there was uh, some, some extra money to the auction company on there, it was $261,000 out the door. That's what I paid for 20,000 square foot of a pretty beat up building. So we had a, a 30 day close, which I thought was a ton of time. Apparently that's very aggressive for banks, they don't like to hear that. But we got it done, we got the money together, signed the deal about a month later, and I moved in. We moved in, Hoovy was there, Weston GW was there, we had a great time, we had a big opening party where everyone came in the warehouse and did burnouts. We smoked that place out until you couldn't see. Luckily it has four gigantic exhaust fans, you couldn't hold your hand in front of you and see it with the burnouts we were doing in the building. But then you could run over and hit the fans and it would suck all the smoke out and we'd do it again. So the first couple days of the warehouse were absolutely wild. We had a lot of fun in there. And then I looked around and I decided we needed to do, uh, start fixing the place because it's just old. So we got after it. We stripped the building pretty much down to its bones and we pulled all the electrical out, pulled really everything out of the building. There were holes in the floors from machines, stuff like that. We cut out all the problem areas in the concrete, poured new concrete, rewired the whole thing, put in all LED lights 
and uh, started building something worthy of working on cars and making videos in it. We've got four big bin pack lifts in there now, four 10,000s, where I can keep enough cars to stay busy, which is a big problem of mine. You end up waiting on parts, projects like, say, a twin turbo R8, where parts could be months out. You gotta work on something else. So we've got four lifts in there to keep me busy. No matter what, there's always a car going on a lift so I can work on something for the day. That's pretty much my one rule is work on a car every day, fix something. So we, we're doing that, but right now we're in the middle of uh, floors and we're stripped everything out of the building again. It's empty and it's getting fully epoxied floors, which are gonna look insane just based on the, like the size of it. It's pretty crazy. And having nice floors is gonna make a huge difference. Uh, having the cars on display in there and working and being able to find screws you drop on the floor. The most important part, obviously. And at some point, I used to build nightclubs. So I looked up and thought, why isn't this a nightclub? So we just did that too. We uh, put some hang points up in the red iron and we hung a 30 foot of box truss and we started putting up lights. We've got a line array in there, a nice JBL VRX line array so we can shake the buildings down the block which I, you know, I have had some talks with the neighbors. One of them likes to call the police on us, but now we don't turn the system on until they leave. We've got moving lights in there, all the cool stuff. So we can just have fun, have like turn the place into a nightclub and have fun instantly working on cars. Does not blend itself well to working on YouTube at all. They, they don't go together, but it's pretty enjoyable. We've got a big detail bay in there. We're building a full inside detail bay with like a closet, pressure washers inside and all that good stuff. A balcony, that's the Motul lounge. We've got couches up there where you can look out over the shop, kind of stand out by the railing, see what's going on. And maybe a coffee bar. We're thinking that would be a good uh, addition for the caffeine you need to keep working on cars all day. Kitchen, conference room, and uh, you know, the cliche things. Uh, make lights out of pistons or something, make the tables out of Audi engines. I've got a lot of dead Audi engines sitting around. So I figure an Audi conference table coming soon. But 2021 was truly the year of uh, YouTube shops. Mine was a 2020, but now uh, everyone's jumping on the bandwagon trying to go bigger and bigger. I have a feeling none of us are ever gonna top Adam LZ, even though for quite a while, I had the biggest automotive shop on YouTube. We'd like to thank Patrick Adair Designs for their support of the VinWiki channel this month. Patrick and his team make some of the most amazing rings out of the most exotic materials on earth. They make rings out of superconductors and meteorites and stardust and all the things that you can imagine, including old parts from broken exotic cars. They've got over 20,000 customers and Patrick decided to document his journey and the ways that he makes his rings and the cars that he enjoys on his own YouTube channel. So he's part of our YouTube family. He's coming by to tell some stories soon, but check him out at the link in the description below and use the code VINWIKI for a 15% discount. Thank them for their support of the channel and find you an awesome ring.